This is the M Teeth X5 series electric toothbrush and my mouth has never felt this fresh after a brushing. My teeth are the cleanest they've been since I got them and people have literally asked me if I've been whitening my teeth. I love the look, the sound, the feel. There's a built-in timer to remind me to move the brush around at a systematic pace. This is an awesome brush. It comes with two extra heads, the battery lasts for 90 days, and there's a one-year warranty. Click on the link below and get yourself an electric toothbrush today. Neck pain, back pain? Um, pro both, usually both, especially my back. Does it hurt every day? Yeah. Right, well, which is the worst, your neck or your back? My back. I know my posture is really bad, so I think that's like a part of it. I mean, I kind of just dealt with it and I don't know what started it. Honestly, I was probably like maybe 14. It usually hurts when I'm like sitting for a long time or if I'm just like slouching. Have you ever had any pain that goes down in your legs? Mm -mm. Okay. Any hip pain? Knees? Ankles? Um, I mean, I've always had knee problems. Like my right knee, I messed up basketball in eighth grade. Sometimes randomly I'll just get like bad knee pain in my right knee, but mm -hmm. other than that, it's fine. Well, how about your neck? How often does your neck hurt? Um, it's very rare that my neck will hurt. It's maybe just sometimes, like, you know, like if I sleep on it wrong, then it will hurt, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's nothing too bad, very So, weird. have you ever been to a chiropractor before? No. All right, how do you feel about it? Nervous? I'm excited? excited. A little nervous. Cool. I'm excited. All right, have you done anything for your back pain in the past? Have you gone to a PT, told any other professional? I know I went to my doctor's um, about a breast reduction, because I think that's part of my back problem, mm -hmm. is just because, like, it just like puts the weight down. Mm -hmm. She said that like in order to get that, I would have to go to a um, PT to like fix whatever is going on in my back mm -hmm. in order to do that. But I think it's part of my problem. Okay, looking at the feet first, there is an eversion on the right side, not present on the left. So a little bit of a difference on the right foot, on the toe off. But heel strike and then mid stance is when it starts to evert. And then uh, there might be some external rotation in the hip there. Yeah. Shoulders look pretty close to even. I can't tell from here by the hands or the shoulder. Arm swing is slightly restricted on both sides, so not completely let go in the in the walk. Maybe a high left shoulder. Good. Okay, looking at the hip swing, there's slightly more hip swing to the right, and then possible slightly hard right. It's hard to tell with the t-shirt, but looking to the right for a hypermobility possibility. You want to touch your feet, okay? Okay. Good, and then we have slightly decreased arches on both sides. Go ahead and turn around and go the other way, and just the back of your uh, feet. Okay, but no pronation on the Achilles tendon. These are straight up and down, and so no pronation in the foot, but a little bit of eversion on that right side. Beginning with observation, just looking at your posture, Grayson. So you do have a slightly accentuated thoracic curvature here. That's that posture. But like, let's just see, do you have any more sit up in there? Like there. Then that feels terrible, right? Yeah. I mean, I usually don't sit this straight either. Mm -hmm. It's only because the neck muscle, or it's only because the muscles aren't used to sitting like that. Mm -hmm. So um, there's like training that's involved with that. But you can do it. You can train yourself to sit like this you have the opportunity to change your posture. Every moment you can change your posture. But that's all posture is, is just your conscious recognition of it. It's like a meditation, it's like a presence, it's an awareness. Okay, a little bit more increased heat on this right side. It feels like this is where the change is. Uh, this is where the most of the compensation is. Okay, I'm going to push in a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we're like, so this is the bottom of the scapula here, which means T7, it should be here. So we're looking at T6 in the thoracic spine. Okay, I'm gonna palpate the SI joints. Any tenderness here? Uh, no, I think so. This side, any tenderness here? Mm -mm. Okay, any tenderness along the glutes? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, lumbar spine. Let's see what's happening in here. Okay, right, left. 
Do you feel a difference? Same? Yeah. Where's the difference? It feels like it's like tighter on the right side. Like a little bit of restriction in the right lumbar spine. We saw the right foot everting in the hallway on the walk. When we saw accentuated movement on the right hip, so we'll check and see if there's a hypermobility there. Okay, nothing terrible sticking out, but just some general stiffness in this area. So... This is probably where your neck gets stiff with the mm -hmm. with the whole sleeping thing here at the bottom. So we're gonna take a little extra, we're gonna take an extra look at that when you're laying down. Okay, go ahead and open all the way. Good close. Okay, do just the left. Good. Go just the right. Good close. I feel less movement on the left side in all of those movements. Okay. Let's see this. Bring your chin down to your chest. Good. Back up. Chin to your chest. Good. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's go all the way up. Any pain, discomfort, tension? Mm -mm. Good. Now let's go left ear, left shoulder. A little bit of a block right there. Let's see the right side. Smooth. Not as much right there. Yeah. Smooth, all the way to the end range of motion, that's good. Uh, this is a uh, check for to see where your hips are at. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna feel that you're on is relax. So you're gonna feel my fingertips on the back of your hamstrings, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna slide up to the glute fold. The bottom of the glute fold, we're lower on the right and higher on the left. That means the right hip has possibly gone backwards like this. And then look straight ahead, that's good. And then looking from the top, okay, bring your toes exactly even with each other. Good. Okay, and then looking from the top, we're slightly accentuated on the right side here. So, so this was externally rotated just like we saw. So this looks like it's externally rotated based on your glute fiber here. Uh, that would match what we saw in the hallway. And so right possible PIEX or left possible ASIN. A little bit of a lateral sway to the left. Good. Again, another lateral sway. All right, let's see this. Close your eyes. Take out the visual system. It really accentuates the equilibrium. Good. Another lateral sway. Good. Good. Okay, you can stop. Open your eyes. All right, do you have any hypermobility in your family? Do you know? Is anyone like super flexible? Mm -hmm. Any gymnasts? Mm -hmm. You can't touch your thumb to your thing? No, okay, that's not bad. That's good. Okay, so looking at your leg length, the right leg comes up short and the right still coming up short and I still see the external rotation on the hip here. So the right leg being short confirms what we saw on the glute standing test. So you do have a PI on the right. Good, right short. Have to see with the super fuzzy socks. Right, short, and it crosses over to become the long leg. One more time, left, down. Okay, so the, the muscles are firing properly here when you're doing the raised leg test. Let's do one more time on the right. Down, left, down. Was one side easier than the other? Yeah, I feel like my left side's easier than my right. Okay. Okay, so the extension ease would point to the SI joint on the right. Your lumbar muscles are firing uh, normally. So that's going to point us right to the sacrum here as the primary cause of what's happening with your low back. All right, so I'm going to do one more test here using the Lovett Brothers system. So we can test where the torsion is or like where the torque, where the twisting is in your lumbar spine by palpating the cervical spine up here because everything is connected. Let's see if there's any on the left side. I assume that there will be. We're gonna check L5, C5, L5. Any tenderness here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I surprise myself sometimes. Good. Good, left hip up. Good, just like that. Good.
Pressure's okay? Uh-huh. Still good?
little stretch on the spine. Nice gentle breathing. Okay, so we're gonna start at this guy here. And I'm one on the right, so nice and gentle. Let's practice one first. You're gonna take a deep breath in through your nose. Good, and then out through your mouth. Good, I'm gonna follow your breath down like this with my hands, and then at the end of your breath, I'm just gonna push a little bit harder, okay? That's good. Okay, nice and gentle. Okay, I'm not going to push hard the first time. I don't think I have to push that hard to get through this. So let's give it a try. Deep breath in. Good and out. Good, sinking in. Good, now. This one's kind of high up. I'm going to lower the headpiece down here like this. Gentle, gentle breathing, same thing. Deep breath in and out. Good, sink again. Good, let it all out. Your shoulders relax. Good. Now, nice and gentle, breathing in through your nose. Good, out through your mouth. Good, we're gonna bring this down like this. Good, perfect. Down, good, shoulders. Good, and you're back. So your right leg is still short, okay? So your right leg is short, so now what you're gonna do is turn your head to the right. Good, back to center. Okay, that made it more uneven, so the left leg actually got longer so this the difference between them got it increased now turn your head to the left so that time your left leg shortened up and it made the difference decrease go back to center okay now uh this is where i think we're going to go with this so let's bring your left ear to your shoulder good that also made the left leg get shorter and the difference decrease go back to center now this should make the left leg increase. Go right ear to your shoulder. Ooh, back to center. Okay, so that actually shortened it up too. Eh? Tuck your chin to your chest. Good, now down. Okay, and so that evened it out means that we have two upper cervical adjustments to perform. Left shoulder was high. And so I see just a little bit of a tilt that way. So the left ear is high. So if we're adjusting atlas on the right and it's gone posterior. Tender. 
A little bit, yeah. Thunder. Yeah. So I'm going to bring your head over to the right like this, good, and then nice and gentle. I'm going to follow your breath. You're doing good, but all you have to do is breathe. Good. Right from there is where we're going to adjust, good, nice and gently. Okay, take a nice soft breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good, let it loose. Oh my lord. <laughs> It just gets tighter as we go up, huh? <laughs> yep, so yeah. the leg length was right. You do have two upper cervicals. Now, yep, okay, so nice and gentle. We're gonna adjust right here at C2. Deep breath. It's really tight there. No, it won't be in a second. Sink, you know, let it go. Easy breezy. <laughs> I felt good. I don't know if my big toes will crack because I broke both of them in the past. Yes. And they never were able to crack. It kind of hurt sometimes. But... Challenge accepted. Oh. It can do it. I can feel it. Except your feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Whoa, did you feel it? Yeah. Close. Oh. All right. That's gonna be difficult without my thumb, but. So this is a digestive organ manipulation, okay? So first I'm gonna find the ileocecal valve. This is the window between the large and the small intestine. We locate that valve by first locating the belly button here and then the ASIS here in front of the hip bone. Connecting these two points in the middle is where we start to look for the valve. It's a little bit more firm than the rest of the area. It's right above the appendix. Got some movement in there. Did you eat breakfast today? I ate uh, chicken Caesar wrap from Sheets before I came. It's a heavy breakfast. <laughs> so this is a little tender here, right? Yeah. Nice gentle breathing. Gonna let your tummy relax as much as you can, that's good. Got no audible release. Okay, the next is the pyloric sphincter. Okay, this is where the stomach empties into the small intestine. Okay, we go four fingers or two inches above the belly button. This is where that wrap is. <laughs> it's all coming down the chute.
Okay, not bad. Okay, now I'm going to do a diaphragm maneuver, okay? Good. This is the, the path of the colon from the ileocecal valve. You have the ascending colon. Good. The transverse colon. And the descending colon here. Pins keep your hips in place. Oh, okay. Okay, your arms are good right there. I'm gonna use this to support your cervical spine. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So this helps me grip onto the neck. You, you let your chin relax, let your head relax. So I'm gonna follow your breath, Grayson, and then as you breathe out, just like the other adjustments, we're gonna pull in that direction like that, okay? A deep breath in through your nose, and then just let your whole body sink in as you breathe out. Good, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. Did you feel it in your low back? A little bit. A little bit. Mostly up here. Yeah. Yeah, it got, there was a little bit of like, there was like a little bit of tension in your neck and shoulders. So we're going to do one more, okay? Just has to be a little bit faster this time. So one more time. Deep breath in. And out. So well, each pulse point has a organ and meridian associated with it. And there's a superficial and a deep, so a superficial up here. So we can read the organs, but then we can also read something called constitution. Constitution is like your basic human being set up. Play any video games ever? You know, you get to like choose your character mm -hmm. and you can like choose like, do you want the fast one or the strong one or the one who's got lots of endurance yeah. and they all have their different features. Well, humans are like that. And, uh, and so like, there's like long and lean people, tall, skinny people, fast metabolism, hard to get, gain weight, cold all the time. Um, those are called vata. In exercise science, it's called an ectomorph. And so the vata is related to the elements of air and ether. And so having a vata constitution does not only describe your physical characteristics, it also describes your mental characteristics too. So vata is like 
hard to concentrate, mind bounces around a lot. You like to think expansively, big picture type of person, not really getting lost in the details unless you're overthinking it. But mostly it's big picture awareness because that's what air is. Air and ether both spread out, they're expansive, which is why vatas like to travel, they like to move. You've got a lot of vata here. Yep, and so often also associated with vata, flying creatures, birds, insects. So Vata people think etherically, so we think cosmically, you know, attachments to the sun, the moon, the stars. <laughs> you have a moon tattoo and a butterfly tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> right? Those are expressions of Vata. <laughs> so the kidney pulse is slightly decreased. Now the kidneys, your kidneys are healthy, you're 20 years old. But the kidney organ and meridian energetically represents fear. And so this is part of that vata, like being very light, airy, windy. Um, it's easily, you're easily pushed, you know what I mean? Like you can sway in the direction of aggression and fear. So, so on a deeper note, the news is not very good for you. Don't watch the news, okay? You're too vata. It's just going to make you scared of everything. Uh, but also, the only way to really, like, create some kind of balance in that kidney fear emotion is to do things. You need to try things. You need to face the fear, obviously. It's an obvious thing. And then once you do it, then you just get over it. You're like, oh, I did it. I'm fine. Um, I mean, Look, and you have the Om Mudra right now. Do you do yoga ever? No. Just naturally in the Om Mudra? <laughs> Okay, so you're familiar with the ASMR too, right? Yeah. This audio-visual experience of people focusing their attention on something. The brain starts to try to predict what's going to happen next. Breathing in through your nose based on the patterns that are occurring. Get out through your mouth. Changes and alterations in that pattern. Excite the brain in a way. The neurons are firing. Good. Let it all out. Your shoulders relax. Based on the sensations that you're receiving through your eyes and your ears. Think, you know, let it go. Easy breezy. Oh my lord. How's that for you? Is that good for you? Yeah.